Hi, my name is Jason Lanier and I wanted to share a really fun story with you guys. Uh, I'm sitting here in New Orleans, uh, still a free man, which is a good thing. Um, I, for years, have wanted to visit the Six Flags uh, Park here in New Orleans that was destroyed by Hurricane Katrina. I've heard about this place that a lot of urban explorers go, uh, the old Six Flags that shut down. And I came to see if it, you can actually get in. That's amazing. There aren't any no trespassing signs anywhere. And the gate's wide open, so I'm not busting anything. It's not even a broken lock. It's... I just thought if it was an urban myth, you wouldn't be able to get in this place. I want to make something clear. I'm not recommending that anybody goes into the park. In fact, I do want to let you know, you will get caught by the cops. I mean, you are going to get caught. So I'm going to go explore a little bit, see what I can find. Now, I know for some people you might be saying, well, why in the world would you want to go to a place like that? Getting a little bit closer now. Just <laughs> crazy that a place like this is just completely abandoned. It's amazing. It's like straight out of a movie. I would imagine this is some sort of a an entrance. Again, for the record, I don't see any no trespassing signs. If you have an artist's eye, um, it, it, it presents opportunities for you that you can't get anywhere else. Oh man, I would love to do a shoot here. Some nice language on the pole I'll avoid. I freaking have to do a shoot here. It's just this post-apocalyptic world that you know you couldn't even dream up on a movie set. I'm gonna take a quick picture. You know, I've wanted to go there for years. A couple years ago I passed by, I saw lots of cops, so I just decided not to go. That leads me to my current trip here. So many choices, where do I begin? I only have about maybe even an hour left of daylight. So I went over there and um, just had an amazing time. I went during the day, um, was able to shoot. I just kind of scoped things out and walked around. It was wide open. I wish people could, would explore this stuff without destroying this stuff. Tagging it. I walked in, walked around, and got some landscape shots, some other stuff. And they should use this place for a horror film. I mean, it would be freaking outrageous for a horror film. Wild. It's crazy. Ugh. That wood will give. I'm taking another quick shot. Having grown up in uh, Southern California, very used to uh, Disneyland. So, this is wild. I mean, we have annual passes to Disneyland and of course, I'm into Six Flags in Southern California as well. And uh, coming out to a place like this that's just completely empty is just unnerving, but absolutely outrageously cool. <laughs> I gotta do shoot here. Gotta get a bride or a model to come out here and shoot with me. It's amazing. This is inside Spongebob and his ride. Must have been some sort of a virtual reality type ride. Turn up movie screen.
crazy. This must have been all that carnival stuff in here, I'd imagine. Giant Ferris wheel. <laughs> wow. If you weren't here in the daytime, you would swear this place is haunted because there's so many noises. Most of it's just doors creaking, trees bending, water in places, but it does uh, have an interesting feel to it. it uh, if you're walking around here with no lights at night, you'd be pretty freaked out. It'd be fun. It'd be something I'd like to do, actually. Little carts and debris over here. I know I'm a photographer and I see the world differently than some people do, but I love stuff like this. I love that there's something to remind us of history, uh, even sad parts. I was just looking uh, the other day, even after World War II, uh, Charles de Gaulle in uh, France left one of the cities that the Nazis torched as a reminder um, so. People would never forget what the, the atrocities the Germans did in World War II. And uh, I'm not saying that this is similar in regards to the atrocities or anything, but it was tragic due to Hurricane Katrina. And uh, it is cool. I mean, I love abandoned stuff. I love stuff that gives us a different view of the world. So uh, this is a cool moment for me to be able to see this and share it with you guys. Mega Zeph. That's awesome. Pretty good girl dressed up like a carnival outfit or something. I have a feeling I'm probably gonna have to backtrack and go out the uh, way I came in. Who knows, maybe this is where they exited. So this has to go out. Awesome. Uh. Now this takes me up to the ride. <laughs> 
Perfect. Take a quick picture. I think that was the, I read online they took the Batman ride down. Can you imagine this whole place was just covered in water? It's crazy. One thing I am surprised about is the lack of uh, any wildlife. Maybe they hear me coming a mile away, but I'm still surprised to, I mean, not even squirrels or dang, rats or, I'm sure they're somewhere. You can tell that this water has been sitting a while. Now, if I didn't have all my gear, I'd walk over that said uh, wood, piece of wood. Both all my gear, not a good idea. Plus I need to hit the gym. That would help. So many places in here to shoot. <laughs> so cool. I wonder where all the horses went. This right here is awesome. Man, if I got a good sunset, this could be outrageous. Would have been nice to get a really nice sunset shot tonight, but too much cloud cover. Even way back, 10 years ago, prices were still expensive. Funnel cake, six bucks. Small drink is three dollars. <laughs> still expensive. This would be awesome to have a wedding couple right here. So the sun has set. I mean, I probably have about another 30 minutes of light at the most. Um, 
going back to the beginning now. What in the world is this? Wow. That'd be so awesome to shoot. Disposable cameras. Super cool place. Gotta try to get a set, shoot set up. Well, thanks for joining me on my walkthrough. It was uh, just, it's a crazy place. Real eerie, fun at the same time. Um, I want to set up a shoot and uh, free shoot and come and, and shoot just somebody. For kicks and giggles, it would be pretty awesome. So, going on inside, can do a photo shoot and see what I get. Very excited. Have a couple assistants with me today, um, as well as a model and a bridal gown. So, I'm very excited to see what we get. And as soon as we got there and started to do a few shots, just some kids in here throwing crap out of the windows chairs and being real destructive and I told them if they didn't stop I'd call the cops and they left that's them it's good to enjoy this place not to destroy it so thanks to those teens being there it really put the team on edge put the model on edge put the assistance on edge and resulted in me only shooting right here in the front part of the park. Uh, this, what you're seeing here, these images here are from nine minutes of shooting with my D800 and a pop-up flash. Um, kind of gave it a very eerie feel. It was very windy as you can see she's holding her veil in most of the shots. Uh, this shot here is probably my favorite of the group but it uh, shortened the shoot tremendously and uh, kind of gave me the resolve that I needed to come back and uh, try it again. So that leads me to the shoot we did tonight. It's my last night here in New Orleans before I fly home to California. And uh, I had a model lined up, a bride. Um, and uh, the thing is, it was like this pouring, it's pouring rain today. It's crazy. So we went inside the park um, and started shooting and it, it was, it was just out, outrageous. It was so cool to be able to shoot inside of there um, and, and to be there when it's dark and, and there's um, you know all this other stuff around you and you don't know what's there. It can be kind of sketchy. It's very nerve nerve-wracking being in there during a rain, lightning, thunderstorm, because not only are you having to utilize different elements of photography to make it work, but you're having to worry about if there's people there.
we went and shot at the swings, which was amazing. Uh, put the bride there in the swings, and, and, and the water's coming down. It's pouring rain, doing long, uh, long uh, second exposures, um, long shutters, um, getting some just amazing shots. Make sure she doesn't fall in it. We went and shot over it by the bumper cars, which is which was pretty cool. But then the one, the, the creme de la creme, the thing that I really wanted to shoot was the Ferris wheel. Now the Ferris wheel is in the back of the park, which is why we didn't do it at first. There's a branch right there, watch out. Um, so we went back to the Ferris wheel had everything set up, had the camera ready to roll. This is the epitome of a crazy, crazy shoot. Right here, right now. And um, on a pitch black night like tonight, where there's no lights or no, there's no electricity in the park, um, it's pretty disconcerting when you see headlights coming your way. 
So <laughs> we go down. I was worried that they would see the light of the video camera even though we're shooting in infrared mode. So I ran over, I took the video camera down and I'm there with my bride and my assistant and we all lay on the ground. Now it's freezing cold, it's pouring rain, but we're laying down right on the ground, which was wild. Um, and all of a sudden the cops come by. Now, uh, for those who don't know much about me, I mean, I love to go to abandoned places. I love to see stuff like this, but um, I have a spotless criminal record. I have never been in trouble outside of a speeding ticket. So to, to be hiding, be, <laughs> it's a very different feeling because I've never actively hidden from cops. Um, now, to be honest with you, I thought it might be the cops, but I was one of the main, main reasons we also ducked down is I didn't know if it was another car. Uh, again, you can drive in there. So part of my concern was, is this another car? I don't even know if it's the cops. And if it's another car, who knows who it could be at that time of night. So. That's another reason, it's one of the main reasons we hid. We knew it was the cops when we started seeing their flood lamps go back and forth, and their spotlights, and so um, <laughs> they went by, we <laughs> were laying there, so stupid. But they we're laying there, and it, the flood, go, the spot goes this way and that way. And I'm like, you know, this is stupid. We are not gonna evade the cops. We're not running, and we had already determined we're not running away. I think it just, it was an instinct just to drop on the ground, and, and honestly, we're, we didn't know who was coming. So once we saw it was the cops, uh, we got up and uh, they started putting the light, they put the light on us. They're like, put your hands above your head. <laughs> thinking this is only in the movies, right? So I put your hands above your head. So I put my hands up. Um, now I've got all sorts of straps and everything because I'm a photographer, obviously. And um, he comes around, he has his partner with him. They shine the lights on us. And then we go and uh, he says, get your gear to get together and come over to the car. And I'm thinking, great. So he goes, we go over, we put our gear in the back of this car and he says, all right, get in the back of the car. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm actually, I'm thinking this, I mean, really the only thing that I can uh, relate to in this experience is when I used to watch the show Cops. I have no idea what's going to happen. So we get into the back of the cop car and it's got the bars and everything. It's the only time in my life I've ever been inside of a cop car. We get in and he says, what in the world are you guys doing out here? And I said, well, we're you know, shooting. And he says, well, why in the world, who shoots stuff out here like, like bridal stuff? What are you doing? And I said, well, have you ever heard of Trash Address or kind of those kinds of sessions? This is what this is. And he's like, well, I don't know if, if it's for you, that's fine, but uh, you can't do it here. And I said, I understand. And um, <laughs> we're all sitting there and everything is yes, sir, no, sir. <laughs> I'm super worried that I'm going to, you know, get busted and now I have to call my wife to bail me out of jail in Louisiana which would not go over too well. Uh, he's taking us and he says, where are you parked? And I said, well, we're, he says, you parked in the park? Are you parked outside? I said, we're parked outside. He took us to the entrance of the park. He asked us for our, for our IDs, um, took our information down. And then he says, so where is your car? And I said, well, it's actually in one of the neighborhoods. Yes, sir. All the way to where it's your first available right. He's like, all right, I'm gonna drive you to the car. Uh, I'm thinking, okay, is he gonna tow it? What's gonna happen? All the way to your first available right. Yep. Yep. So here's the thing that was really funny. The cop says to us, you know, you scared the hell out of us. And I said, well, what do you really mean? And he says, you really scared the hell out of us. And I'm like, <laughs> and I said to him, well, if it makes you feel any better, you scared us pretty bad too. And uh, he said, you know, yesterday, we came by here and we saw a Ferris wheel moving because, you know, sometimes it moves on its own. I'm thinking, oh, this is awesome. This guy is like into paranormal activity. I should, I should tell him about my supernatural shoots. Maybe he'll let me off. So anyway, so he's like, yeah, so, you know, I, I got some video of the Ferris wheel moving. But as soon as I put up my camera, the, hit my iPhone, the Ferris wheel stopped moving. And I'm like, okay. He's like, so... I came back tonight to see if we could get a, get a picture of it moving. I'm thinking, okay. I'm thinking, I, th I thought he was just doing his normal rounds. He says, so I pulled up and I shine the light on the Ferris wheel to see if it's moving. And then all I see on the ground are three bodies lying there. <laughs> 
And I'm like, well, that that would scare me. He says, and all of a sudden I see, when I, t when I see you guys start to get up, I'm like, oh my gosh, what's happening? And I'm thinking this guy probably, you know, for a split second only, but probably thought, <laughs> you know, he's seeing Ferris wheels moving in and he's seeing bodies coming up out of the ground. It, it must have actually, in his mind, now that I think about it, <laughs> must have been pretty hilarious or scary. Long story short, he took us over to the car. We did get trespassing tickets. Um, I want to make something abundantly clear. I'm not making light of trespassing. Um, it is against the law and you will get in trouble for it. I did ask the cop this. Well, if it's so bad, why don't you guys just put a padlock on it? Because Lisa had asked, hey, do you have a lot of people coming in? And he, and he said, well, well, here's the thing. The city's broke. So since the city's broke, every time we put a padlock on it, someone cuts it. So we ain't going to put any more padlocks on it. I'm like, but I'm not, I'm thinking this. I'm not saying it, but I'm thinking, yeah, but they pay you guys to come, to come out here. Why don't you just weld the gate shut? Personally, you know, I, I love to explore abandoned things. I never forcibly enter. Uh, I never uh, break anything. Um, and I never vandalize. I think that that's atrocious because I don't tolerate people breaking stuff. I don't care if it's, if it's, if it's just trash. I mean, I, I'm not into destruction, I'm into, into creation, so I don't, I don't get that. But So the funny thing was, he's like, at the end, after he gave us the tickets, he said, so can I see some of your shots? And I'm like, you want to see the shots? He's like, yeah. I said, okay. So I went over and I showed him the shots, and he says, y'all been here a long time. And I'm, I said, well, why would you say that? And he said, well, because um, there's so much lack. This is right after, this is right, you know, before sunset, and I'm like, and I'm sure my Louisiana accent is atrocious, but that's the best I can do. But, uh, uh, I said, no, it's just, I was shooting on a long exposure, about four or five seconds, and when you do that, you can get that much light, it's really cool. Uh, and then at the very end, I even asked, I said, hey, you know, it's kind of a weird request, but, uh, can I get, can we get pictures with you so I can show my wife, and he's like, sure. So, we actually got a picture with me my assistant, and then we did actually a post picture with him holding the wedding dress with the bride, so that was really cool. But I do wish my little moment of plea here would be, I do wish that there was a way for artists to be able to explore some of these things in a safe way. It seems that cities are so re are so reluctant to open things up. It, it seems to me if they're broke, there would be a way to facilitate people getting in there. You could do permits. One of the other cops that I spoke to um, told me that they're, the only way to get a permit for this place is if you're a major Hollywood studio or you personally know the mayor. That sucks. It sucks that normal people like us can't get in and see stuff like this. You know, if it's a major Hollywood you know, studio, they have major money and they can get in. You know, that's, that's bull crap. Why, why can't we get in? Um, you know, a major Hollywood studio should pay more because they're utilizing the whole thing. They're, they're utilizing resources. An average Joe like me is going to walk in. We're not going to even move anything. So the fact that we can't get into these places, it, it, to me, I hate it. Uh, I understand there's liability concerns, but what if you paid a permit fee of two or $300, which paid the wages of a security guard to escort you to make sure that nobody got hurt? I mean, that's an idea. I mean, it really could work. And then the city could actually make money on the place, and that way they could put a padlock on it so they didn't have Joes like me running through the place uh, I, I do wish that we had more access to these places because photographers are the historians of the modern era. And, uh, you know, there's a time that this place will be torn down and it'll only be the shots that people like me took that chronicle what was there. And the devastation that Hurricane Katrina wrought on this place. And to see a place that is so amazing, it's, it's, it's something you'll never forget. So... I wish we had a different way to be able to see these things without it always, always, always being against the law and everything and everyone seeming to always try and crack down on photographers when, for the most part, all we're trying to do is create something cool. So, till next time, keep shooting, guys. Have a great time. Do whatever you can to uh, stretch your creative juices and more than anything, uh, never give up on your dreams. And remember, you only have one chance to get it right. Talk to you later. Bye.